Hello and welcome to day 23 of the Money Challenge. Today we're going to look at debt. Uh, our verse for the day is Deuteronomy 15 verse 6. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. And you will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. You will rule over many nations but none will rule over you. So today we're looking at debt. And really the first question we need to ask is, is debt sinful? The short answer to that is no. And if I'm completely honest, I have debts uh, that I have, such as a mortgage, and so they are not sinful. It is clearly sinful, however, to borrow money and not repay it. So Psalm 37, 21 says, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. But simply borrowing money in and of itself is not sinful. But as believers, we can often overlook the powerful effect of debt on our lives. Now, Western culture is built around debt. Our entire financial system is built around debt. It is so much part of our everyday life that we can easily um, forget that we are getting into debt. We can also um, miss the cost of debt, not only on our finances, but also in relation to our emotions and the spiritual pressures it can exert on our lives. Proverbs 22, six reads this. It says, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Verse seven then says, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, we often hear about verse six, train up a child, but we never connect it with the next verse, which is the borrower is the servant to the lender. I believe the writer of the Proverbs was trying to make a simple point. It's wisdom to train your child to avoid debt, as debt removes your freedom to rule over yourself and you have to serve another. Debt in simple terms creates a form of spiritual bondage which prevents you from being truly free. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God is calling you to freedom, and debt nearly always reduces that freedom. Now, Proverbs 17.18 says this. It says, One who has no sense shakes hand in pledge and puts up security for a neighbour. The Bible describes the guaranteeing of somebody else's debts or somebody else's liabilities as foolish. The reason is obvious. You have no control over your neighbor's repayment and you can lose your freedom because of somebody else's actions. I, I make it a policy in my life never to guarantee for others. Um, even family, I would just give a gift to them rather than guaranteeing their debts. Um, just because this verse makes it clear that I become in bondage because of somebody else's actions. However, even outside of this, any kind of debt comes at a cost. Haggai 1.6 says, You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to be put in a bag with holes. Now debt is a bag with holes in it. Uh, the simple message is that debt causes you to lose money. And if you are good stewards over God's money, then ge debt generally is to be avoided. Certainly nearly every form of consumer debt should be avoided. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you borrowed £5,000 on a credit card to buy a sofa. And let's say the average rate of interest is about 18.9%. If you made minimum repayments on this sum, you would repay the debt 
in 31 years time and you would have paid interest on that £5,000 of £7,076. So the total amount you would have paid for that sofa is £12,076. Now, if I asked you on day one, here is a £5,000 sofa, do you want to pay £12,000 for that sofa? You would have said, uh, no thanks, it's a £5,000 sofa. But by buying it on a credit card and only making minimum repayments, that's exactly what you've done. So if you are somebody who has credit cards and simply maintains but by paying the minimum amount, you're literally putting it in a bag with holes in it. You're literally taking your money, putting it in a bag, and it's just falling out. My advice to anybody who has a credit card but doesn't repay it in full every month um, is probably just to cut up the credit card. Nearly all debt carries a hidden price tag, but even those with a high interest rates, even more so. Now, most of us are familiar with the account of Genesis um, and Adam and Eve. Uh, Eve and then Adam ate the fruit which God told them not to eat. In Genesis 3.13 we read, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I ate. Now, the word beguiled in Hebrew is the word nasha. Nasha literally means to lend with interest. So, the picture is this. Adam and Eve took on a spiritual debt that they could not afford to pay. A debt that would cause huge levels of suffering for generation after generation. And, and interestingly, the, the word nashak actually comes from the root word, um, which is nashak, which means to be bitten by a poisonous snake. The, the Jewish people were in no doubt about the risks of debt. It's like a, a warning on the cigarettes and those pictures that say you could die of lung cancer if you smoke. In the same way, debt itself was, had a health warning attached to it. It's like being bitten by a poisonous snake. Now, as well as the actual cost in money terms of debt, um, there is a real cost often in terms of emotional pressure and spiritual pressure you come under as a result of debt. And often there are common themes that I see occurring. Debt can make you feel powerless and that you're drowning. People often end up working multiple jobs or huge amounts of overtime in order to meet the demands of debt. Debt can put strains on family life as the mother and father are spending as much time at work as they can and are not spending time with the family. And if they are spending time with the family, the family is getting the worst of them rather than the best. Debtors often hide from creditors. They don't open their bills and they ignore chasing calls. And this makes the creditors even more aggressive and this is causes them to pursue you more and more. You have aggressive debt chasers who will often put pressure on husbands or wives and this in turn creates pressures within a marriage. So we're going to look over the next couple of days how to get out of debt. But my advice is generally that if you're not currently in debt, you should try and avoid it. I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a mortgage. In fact, I do have a mortgage. Um, and I'm not saying that, but I am saying that the common types of consumer debt should probably be avoided at all cost. I would pray carefully about any type of debt um, that you're going to bring into your life. And listen to what God is saying. I know that people have successfully believed for, say, a debt-free house. And I've seen prayers answered in that regard. But certainly, if you're going to borrow make sure you're borrowing well within your comfort levels of what you can easily repay each month. Let's pray together. Father, I want to be a good steward of the money you've given me. Give me wisdom and give me grace in this area of debt. Amen.